What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this guide, I'll show you how to make your Windows terminal look a lot better. If we head across to the Microsoft Store for the Windows terminal, you'll see that we have these blocks here, but they're not enabled by default and they're a little bit more confusing with how to set up. In order to get these little blocks, all you need is the Windows terminal installed or the Windows terminal preview, which you can find on the Microsoft App Store. Otherwise, you can download it from the Microsoft GitHub linked down below. When terminal installs, you'll see something like this, or actually this. On Windows 11, it may even be pre-installed for you. Anyways, the first thing I do is open up settings by clicking the down arrow, then settings, and under the appearance tab, I'll go ahead and scroll down to enable use acrylic material in Tabro. That'll make the top transparent. Things look a lot better. The theme, we can only choose between dark and light, but on the color schemes tab over here, we can choose between many different themes and even add new ones from the internet. When we add new, you'll just need to click edit, choose some colors here, and we can rename it as well. Otherwise, you can import using JSON files. So let's go ahead and do that. For example, in the description down below, you'll find a link to the Windows Terminal Themes page where we can easily click through thousands of different profiles to see exactly what we like and what we don't. All you need to do is click Get Theme when you're happy with one. It'll copy it to your clipboard. And in the Windows Terminal, under the Settings screen here, we can click Open JSON File in the far bottom left. And in this new window that opens up, we can hit Control F and search for Schemes inside of quotes and we'll jump down to the themes that we currently have installed. There's a few of them here for now. These are all of the ones built in and come with the program. If we head down to the last one with the closing curly braces, we can add a, a comma and paste in our new theme on the next line. So right here, comma once more, and I'll add another theme I'm particularly fond of being the terminal from Dracula. All we need to do is copy the theme here, for example, and paste it in with a comma on the previous line. We'll hit Control S to save and we can close this. Then looking inside of the terminal once more under color schemes, we should see our new themes here. Here I have Dracula. Next up, we'll go ahead and download some nerd fonts. Essentially, these are normal fonts, but they have thousands of icons in them and little glyphs that add to the overall user experience. You'll find this GitHub link down below. We have tons of font awesome icons, dev icons, weather, oct icons, material design, etc. They really add to the overall experience. If we scroll down, you'll see patched fonts. These are all of the different fonts that they've added this to. One of my favorite fonts is the Fire Code Nerd font here. All we need to do to download these is to head to the releases section all the way at the top of this GitHub page here. Then under the latest release, 2.3.3 in this case, we'll need to scroll down to the bottom of this post where we'll find assets. You may need to expand this. Clicking show all, we get all of the different fonts available for download now. I'll go ahead and download maybe Fire Code here. So I'll click it. It's a 31 megabyte file, but when it's done, we can open it and we have tons of fonts in here. Now, all we need to do is extract this to a folder. I'll just make a new folder on my desktop and drag all of them in like that. Then we can close the zip, select everything with Control A, right click, and then click Install. If you get any areas, just click Close and wait for it to complete. Now that it's done, we can close it and return to the Windows terminal. We'll need to close it and reopen it to refresh the icon cache. Now we can head into settings once more. I'll move this folder away. Now from here, we need to head to the defaults where we see profiles here. Scroll down and click on appearance. Then inside of here, we can change the color scheme that we want our terminal to use to whatever you want. And then font face, just change this from Cascadia or whatever it is to one of the options that we just installed. For example, fire code NFM or retina. You can choose whichever one you want. I think I'll choose retina as it's just a little bit thicker. Then with everything as is, we should now be set up. On top of this, there's tons of customization that we can do here, such as text formatting, transparency, adding padding to the window, and most importantly, setting a background should you want. You can also set it to use your desktop wallpaper. So when we save changes, you can see we now have a wallpaper here, but it's a bit distracting. Obviously, you'll want something nice and dark that you can easily read over. I'll go ahead and turn that off as it's a little bit annoying. You can either do that manually or head back here. Background image, it's now expanded. We can lower the opacity to something more handleable, and now it's much easier to read. But I think I'll leave that off and maybe customize it later on to something less in your face. 
there we go. Next up, we'll be installing and setting up Oh My Posh. This is a extension for Windows Terminal that makes things look a heck of a lot better. You'll find it in the description down below. Oh My Posh, this is what we came here for, these little arrows and blocks. All we need to do is make sure that we have access to the winget command. Running winget, you see a response like this. If you don't see a response when you run winget in PowerShell or Command Prompt, in the Microsoft Store, you can search for winget, one word, and you'll see app installer. This is all we need to do, just install the app installer. Then after restarting your terminal, you should have access to the winget command. All we need to do is click get started. Then at the very top right, click the sun icon to make the page readable. And on the far left, click Windows under installation. Scrolling down, it'll recommend us to use a nerd font and to use it inside of WSL. We need to install it in the WSL Linux, but we'll get there later. Installation, winget, copy this command here by clicking the copy button here and simply paste it in your command prompt or PowerShell window and hit enter. Now it'll be downloaded and installed. Just like that, it's now done. Scrolling down, this includes Oh My Posh and themes for Oh My Posh. And for the path to be reloaded, a restart of your terminal is advised. And here's a prompt about antiviruses and how you can get to where it's located to whitelist it. In the future, we can run winget upgrade, followed by this here to update it. But for now, we should be fine. Let's go ahead and activate it now. We'll close and restart our terminal and things won't look any different, but we'll type in O-my-posh and hit enter and you'll see response here. Great. At the bottom of this page here, we can copy this command here to get the default setup enabled. So I'll paste it in and hit enter. We'll see this command. I'll copy it, right click and paste it in. And now we can see things look a little bit different. Whenever we type a command, we'll see how long it took to run, as well as the current time on the far right, what program we're currently using, etc. For me, this is a little bit much, but that's where themes come in. We can head to themes on the far left here and run get posh themes in order to customize what we're doing. You can see a ton of different themes in here being populated one by one. All you need to do is scroll through these and look for something you like starting from the top. So for example, one shell, agnosta, aliens, etc. We're really just looking for something that tickles your fancy. I like the JBlab one here. We can control click to open a JSON file where it's currently installed, where we can customize it should you want. I'll leave it open to keep the name in memory, just in case I want to go back to it. I think I'm happy with that. So to change your theme, adjust the init script in this file path here. For example, run oh my posh init pwsh for PowerShell config, followed by the path to our wanted theme pipe invoke expression as such. So I'll paste it in and instead of running it, I'll change the file name here to the one that I liked. So for me, it's jblab underscore 2021.omp.json. I'll hit enter. And just like that, we now have our new theme set up here. And just like that, things already look a lot better. Now, the thing is, is that when you restart PowerShell, for example, you'll lose that oh my posh setting. Heading across to the prompt section of this, we get this command here to see exactly what shell we're in. So for example, this should return PWSH for PowerShell, which is good. We can run Notepad Profile to change the default. But if you get an error about the file not being able to open, copy the next command here and run it, then run Notepad Profile and it should open up. All we need to do is copy this next command, paste it into Notepad, Control S and close it. Now, whenever we open up a new terminal, you'll see the theme here. Obviously though, this isn't the one that I wanted. You'll see a notification here about antivirus and a workaround and how to reload your current page. But using the up arrow to get to our previous commands, this is the one that I'll be using as it's the theme that I like. So notepad profile, instead of using the default, I'll paste in this one, save it and close it. Running dot space dollar sign profile, hitting enter, it should reload and we'll be back to where we were. Opening a new terminal, you should see that things are set up once more and that's great. If we open up command prompt, for example, things don't look great. We can head back to this installation prompt section and open CMD, for example. You'll see steps here are a little bit different. There's no out of the box support for Windows command prompt when it comes to custom prompts. There is, however, a way to use it using Clink, which at the same time supercharges your CMD experience. We can install it here and set it up, but I think this is a different program from the terminal entirely that it is. 
so I don't think I'll be going into that. But anyway, there's a few things that we can customize here, all of them are listed here. It does also work on other systems, such as Mac and Linux. If you'd like to get it working on WSL or Linux for that matter, you can head to the installation tab for Linux. That though is a whole nother video by itself. So if you're interested in that, I'll be releasing that video tomorrow so you can get it set up for your Ubuntu WSL or any WSL. And of course, if you're running a Linux, then that'll help you as well. Anyways, that's about it for this quick guide. So thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao. Thank you.